Ellen Hayes and Mary Martin are with us today, and we're joined right now by a very special woman in the annals of the American Motion Pictures, Ms. Lillian Gish. Welcome. I would like Mary to introduce Lillian, <laughs> if, you, if you don't mind. I love you doing this. Aren't you something? I love introducing this beautiful lady because I've known her too a very long time, and we had a very, very close friend that we adored in Vincent J. Donahue. Oh, and it was my privilege to introduce you to her. I know you did. Oh, Isn't that what? Uh, yes. But you know why, Mary? Uh, I always feel, as a lot of people, that they do a certain thing well. Yeah. And I think with people, I can judge two that would be congenial and like one another. Yeah. And knowing you and working with Vinnie, yeah. I thought, this would be a wonderful combination. And, and I've forgotten if you called me one night when he was at my house or I called you, but I remember introducing you. You did? On the telephone. You did, you did. And then you asked me to uh, the first dress rehearsal yes. uh, uh, or uh, a full rehearsal of Sound of Music. That's right, that's right. And I sat with uh, Baroness von Trapp. Yes, Maria. And Maria and the priest. And, and her Father children. Barna and the and the children. And I couldn't get backstage fast enough. And on stage there was only a one li electric light, a kitchen table, and some chairs <laughs> and a piano. And I rushed backstage to ask Vinnie if he had a piece of it. Well, that means in our language, do you have a percentage? Yes. <laughs> do, you, do, you, do you own a little part of this? Do I? You own a little part. And he said yes. I said that's wonderful because this is the perfect public pudding it will run forever and I went to your dressing room and said Mary you never have to look for another play as long as you live you can play this on crutches <laughs> didn't I you did you did Absolutely. Helen I wonder if you could take a moment and tell us what you think because you are a person who's judged with a great deal of history they see your career as, and you are in fact the, f the first woman of the American stage what do you think about Lillian Gish and her contribution well, I'm so glad you asked me that because um, I, I was going to ask if I could introduce Lillian all over again. We can do a tribute. Because we've been friends for so long. She's my son's James MacArthur of, uh, uh, of another network, can I mention? Oh, of show? course. Of Hawaii Five-O. Well, anyway, she's his godmother and she's his son's godmother. Oh, really? And, and I hope that I will be here to see her be That's my Great grandson's godmother. Oh, <laughs> she'll be here to be in. <laughs> Why did you choose Lillian Gish to be your son's godmother? Because I love her uh, so very dearly. Because she's, I just knew in my heart she'd be the best godmother that ever was, and she is. She watches out for those two, for my son, for his son. She has, she takes a real deep interest in them, and uh, uh, and and for um, for their spiritual life, and. Uh, She's just a dear creature. And she never stops working. Do, That's do you amazing. know what she, no, did, think... what she did? Honestly, I, I, oh, I tell you, you did the, the, the musical, you know, just recently. I, when she Jubilee. came out and did, mm. and these, uh, it was Patricia Munsell and um, Tammy Grimes, and, and John Ray, and, John Ray and, and Cyril Richard and all, and this one. They all went on a tour first, mm -hmm. to, to end all tours, you know, but this is difficult. And suddenly, I came, I came back from New York at, at Christmas time and went to see them. And when this one came out and danced, you know, she did this thing. And then she came through. They were doing Helen Hayes and Helen, Hel pardon me, Helen Kane, when she had the Poo Poo Producer <laughs> song, you know. Mm -hmm. and, the, and they were singing. And then this one would come through and say, Poo Poo, do it, do it. Just do, <laughs> just do that part. Just do that. Poo <laughs> Poo <laughs> It's heaven. It is. And, and she kicked. Oh, my golly. But you know, she's, she really is 18 but, years old. Let of me course tell you what she did. Now, let me tell you what Mary did. She came backstage after. I was dressing in the basement with the orchestras. 25 people. <laughs> I've never been with Only them. way, <laughs> my dear. It was a wonderful place to be. Well, it didn't take long for the entire company to find that she was downstairs. They all came down. She talked to us for <laughs> at least half an hour, and it was like going through the whole company, a doctor, and giving them each a B12 shot. <laughs> Mary Martin isn't up. There's no question about that. I don't know what it, w how or why, but she makes people feel better. I yes. hope. She maybe do. she's a new you vitamin. Do. Yeah, uh, yeah, maybe. <laughs> well, Bob Hope told me once, he, he said, Mary, do vitamins take you? <laughs> well, may I tell something that maybe you don't know and I've never told anyone else? And, oh, 
maybe you didn't mean it, but she made her first hit in New York on My Heart Belongs to Daddy. Mm -hmm. I was in the audience, and she came out with a little short fur coat, and to give the impression the company or the producer wanted to give the impression, I think, that she didn't have anything under it. And she sang this song with a double entente, you know, the double meaning. But not their meaning. When she said, my heart belongs to daddy, she looked up as if she, it were God. Oh, I know. It's her spiritual strength. The well, thing we've lost in America. Oh, Did you mean it, Downing? I, I would love to. I would love to say that this was. Uh, <laughs> no, this is uh, a great this, story, this story that comes with but this. This, this, this was the truth, uh, uh, because I do mean it. But the I actual so. thing that happened was that that blessed Sophie Tucker, who m became mm -hmm. my mother, because yes, you see, I'd never been on the stage. I had never seen a show. I was in the show for three months before I had ever seen a show. This didn't mean that I didn't work in a lot of bars and things out in California. But I was never on the stage, so Sophie knew this. And she came up to me in rehearsal, and they'd been re in rehearsal for three weeks, and I only had ten days, and said, Do you know what you're singing about, kid? And I said, Yes. She said, Do you know you're not singing about your daddy? I said, Yes, I know it's not my daddy. It's somebody who takes care of me. <laughs> and she said, Well, it's a naughty song. And she said, when you sing a naughty song, and you know, she could really sing naughty songs. Sophie Tucker. She was mm. the great naughty song singer of all time. But she said, with you, you sing to the audience on the, on the lines like my fine Finn and Hattie, but when you get to the punchline, you, you put your hands like this and look straight up to God and sing, but my heart belongs to Daddy. She told me this, and I sang it that way for the rest of my life mm. and learned one of the great lessons mm -hmm. from her. But the funny part is, there were things I didn't know what on earth I was singing As you were actually about singing the song? Because I didn't know what Finn and Hattie was. You now know, right? Well, I found out it was a fish. <laughs> Isn't it? Yeah, I think. <laughs> we Finn have to take a break for commercial. We'll, we'll continue right after this. <laughs> Where were some of the places that you used to hang out during your Hollywood period now? I, I'd be curious to hear about some of the places you used to Are you spend. talking to me about oh. hanging out? Well, uh, your Hollywood hangouts. <laughs> Mine were in bars, but in singing. Yeah, singing in bars in Hollywood? exciting time there. Try, you you went through the period of trying to get in the movies and not having it necessarily I had a, I had a pleasant. Test, I had a test in every studio but Republic, and they wouldn't. <laughs> it was their loss. <laughs> then I was signed, you know, they brought yes. me back alive after I did My Heart Belongs to Daddy. But, no, but I really got my training. In, in the you know nightclubs and yeah. one would start at one nightclub started at m midnight mm -hmm. that's when it started I'd get home at seven o'clock in the morning this was great training if you can if you can keep people quiet in a bar while you're singing you can keep uh, you can learn how to s do in the theater mm -hmm. so I think for young people to start anywhere you know wherever you can perform to perform yeah. because to you learn everything. something from every experience Lillian how about you in, in in the times that you recall most fondly from your very long and extensive Hollywood experience where during those days where did you hang out where in did you the in studio seven days a week mm. 12 hours a day <laughs> not I a lot of free in time Hollywood huh? when you worked at everything you worked at writing the story you worked at rehearsing it and that was important. You rehearse for days if it's an important thing like Breath of Nation, weeks, sometimes months, two months with way down east. And then you learned about that thing, the camera. I learned all about lights. That's why I'm here wearing a hat. <laughs> I know too much about lights. I know Excuse, when they're explain good. Explain that to people why you're wearing a hat today. Because we were taught the, the eyes were most important, the mouth was next, and you had to see into the eyes what people were thinking. What they were saying didn't matter, but what they were thinking. We lighted the face with lights. We didn't, we painted it with lights. We didn't do it with makeup. Mm -hmm. We had, our electricians were painters. They were out there busy every minute with your face, trying this, trying that. And then this, the uh, laboratory was right next door, so you went in there to watch the developing and printing of it. You knew about that. Total and you, involvement. After that, you went in and helped.
cut the Isn't film. It marvelous? What and years it, are we talking about uh, now? From 19... 13 to 28. Oh, my. 1913 to 1928. The real birth of uh, the motion well, pictures. We were all craftsmen and women. We had to know all angles, and I wish I didn't. Mm. I wish I'd come out and just not know anything and trust everybody. But I know the cameras have to be a certain height. But, oh, I think if it's If they're wonderful. down here, they photograph up your nose. I wish I knew. <laughs> uh, I never could find it. It's, it's <laughs> very... Uh, really frustrating to to know the business from out there and, and we were all standing equal. up doing the it. electrician the property man the uh, cameraman and we up here in front of the cap we were all equally important no one was outstanding there must have been a tremendous sense of like discovery that you were involved yes. with the medium and yes we, and we're going to we have a commercial we come back helen i want to hear a little bit about your early time in hollywood because it was interesting for you too won awards i know you oscars among them we'll be back just keep an open mind and then suddenly you'll find well we're talking with helen hayes and lillian gish and mary martin and we have a photograph here of a special moment in your life, Helen Hayes. Well, there it is. Here you are with Mr. Irving Where? Thalberg. Well, you can see oh, it over I there see. on the monitor, receiving oh, yes. an Oscar. No, that's with the Louis B. Mayer. Louis B. Mayer, mm -hmm. excuse me. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what film was that for, Helen? Well, that was a film that my husband wrote for me called uh, The Sin of Madeleine Claudet. He hadn't written the original story, but um, uh, it was a play, a very famous play. But he really lovingly wrote every bit of business, every mood change in that play to suit me in that film. And uh, so, uh, through him, I won that Oscar. But Louis and B. Louis me. B. Merritt, it amuses me to see his picture there giving me the Oscar because he sent for me to, my, uh, to his uh, office a few days after that great occasion. And uh, he was bewildered and he was upset because uh, there I was with an Oscar and he didn't, they didn't know what to do with me because I didn't fit into any of the um, patterns that they had for their big stars like Garbo and, and Gene Harlow and Norma Shearer. And he said, I know what we're going to do. He said, you know, you, um, we don't know whether you have any sex appeal. Uh, and I said, well, frankly, I don't either. And um, he said, well, I tell you, uh, we're going to find out and I'm going to take it on myself to have a wonderful white dress made for you like that clinging uh, jersey dress, the white jersey that Norma Shearer wore in a soul. A very wonderful revealing dress and I'm going to pay for that dress and uh, then we're going to take a test of you in it and I said Mr. Mayor I'm going to save you a lot of money because uh, there's not going to be anything under that dress that's going to be of any interest to you or the rest of the world. And uh, so uh, uh, he said, well, that being the case, we'll just have to keep you acting all the time all the on the screen. <laughs> oh, I love it. And that's so they kept me acting. I died in every picture. And, uh, I did nothing but tear jerkers. Hmm? You know, I know, I know something from our mail here on Midday Live, and I know something from your lives, and I think if we could take a moment for, for you, Mary, and you, Helen, just to make a little bit of communication on something. You were both women who were very, very, very close to your husbands, and you've both lost your husbands. And I wonder if you could draw on your own reservoir of experience over becoming widows, maybe to share a little bit of advice or, or wisdom from having gone through the experience with... Maybe a viewer who's watching now who's having a difficult time with that. Well, I can speak up. Uh, I read Mary's book with such delight and such wonder. And I said when I finished it, Mary, mm -hmm. I haven't told you this, but I said to someone, um, you know, this book, in this book, Mary tells everything you wanted to know about acting but never dared to ask. You know that famous <laughs> book about sex? Well, yeah. you do it about acting. Oh. I never dared to ask a lot of the things that I read in your book about acting because I got to be a star too young and thought I mustn't let on I don't know all the things I should about acting. Mm -hmm. But I found out that reading your book, you're, it's wonderfully uh, uh, illuminating to a young actor. Oh, how marvelous. Yes. yes. To have you say and that. I'm Many very great grateful to you for really? writing that. I wish I had done it in the books I wrote. But anyway... Um, about this thing of widowhood, I have one bit of advice that I yearn to give to every wife, every young wife, um, and that is that if you really love the man to whom you're married, you must make 
terribly sure you never do anything that you're going to regret later on. I regret every time I lost my temper with Charlie. Mm -hmm. I regret every time I let him down in any way mm -hmm. in our lives because he never deserved it. But of course, when you're when you're hurtling through uh, your young it's life, you don't realize that. Terms. But Helen, you never let Charlie down. Mm -hmm. I know because I've been with you. Oh, through many things, and she certainly was always there with Charlie. Always, always, always to Helen. Always. Can you comment well, at all on you this tell. subject, Mary? That well, I, I, um, this you've is, gone through it and you've learned yes, something the, about life and about yourself. This is, uh, you know, Helen. This happened to Helen much longer uh, ago, but mine was mm -hmm. has just been three years, and I think that that uh, I am the typical wife, mother of anyone who loses the man that they love and will love forever. And, and at the beginning, you're in complete shock. There's no way to, to understand it until it happens, and you are in shock. You can't believe it. Then there comes a period where you are so utterly lost. And, and when I was that way, I went back to a place that we had been only once, and it was on the ocean, and I walked. And every day I walked by the sea, walked, 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 walked. And let myself think every single thought that, that would hurt you me. You couldn't repress anything. No, let it happen. Let, it, let happen. it come in. And then, naturally, my joy came back into my life with my, our, our daughter, Heller, uh, mar remarrying uh, and, and having a wedding and having young people around and, and my children all coming to, to me and being with me and having this fabulous second chance to really know my children and my grandchildren. Because always in the theater, you... The theater is the main thing, but this was the greatest help. Then there came a period where I was furious with Richard. Oh, I was so mad. How dare he leave me? Sure. And, I, and I hear that this happens. Oh, I think you so. You know, and I really would talk and say, you, how, how, could, how could you do this to me? You know, because he'd, 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 he'd taken care of me for 34 years. Now I'm going through another period, and I uh, have decided, and it happened because of the book, I had to face that I was not going to have him with me. Yeah. I do and not that face that I will not see alone. him, but I feel I know I will, yeah. you know, but that's my way of thinking. But I have turned my life around and I moved to a place that I had never lived. I painted the house pink and turned it around. I made the back the front and the front the back. Mm -hmm. So I started my new life because, as I do say in the book, if, if I don't go on and Richard dedicated his life to me, it was our career, but if I don't go on and do things to bring joy to people that I love, and that's the public and my friends, then his life would have been in vain. That's beautiful. So mm. go on and it's, on and on, because he would be unhappy if I did There's great inspiration in that, as there is great inspiration in this book, which we have not shown you yet. Mary Martin, My Heart Belongs, is dedicated to your husband. and. To, Not the, only the, to the man who taught me the meaning of the words heart and belongs. A great dedication. Let's take a pause. And I have a, a young woman who I think has a great career ahead of her on the stage that I want the three of you to meet. Good. Kelly Good. Garrett Good. right after this. We'll be back. Stay with us. That I see. You are if I had to pick a talent and if I had to pick a voice when personally to join the ranks of successful women on the stage, my vote at this point would go to Miss Kelly Garrett because she has a voice, I think, that can really sing it all and has that electric presence that it takes to make it on Broadway. And in Bro on Broadway, you've been in Sammy Khan's Words and Music and The Night That Made America Famous and Mother Earth. And I thought you might enjoy meeting, well, I know you're going to enjoy meeting our enjoy. three guests today. <laughs> this is the first time I've never had anything to say. It's, uh, <laughs> no, you're, you're so speechless to be. This is my opportunity to be on stage with, look at those eyes. It's wonderful. It's, it's what can I, oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you, really, you project essentially the, for yourself what, what these women have accomplished, right? And this is where you are in your life right now. You would like to put it all out on the stage for a long, oh, long time, oh, correct? Uh, absolutely. It's so, you know, I'm from Santa Fe, and we never had, there was, I didn't know what theater was. You're one of what, nine children? Ten. <laughs> one of Ooh. ten children. And we, the, the musicals that, that we saw were in the, in the, the, in the movie theater. You know, the mm -hmm. music, and that was the, my love of 
theater. I didn't know what New York was. It was really just kind of things you read and saw pictures in a book. But to really be on a stage and to do that was awesome. And, and that love for song just was in me. And, and to see that was thrilling. It's very it's similar, really, to, to your yes. early experience yes. in Texas, yes. is it yes, not, it Mary? Texas, we're very close, and yeah, I used to go to Santa Fe. It's the Southwest that does it. I yeah. guess. I, it must Texas. be the air. I think it's the altitude as well. For the, <laughs> you know, they say the Broadway singer years ago. You don't. There was no. What am I saying? Years ago, they. I can't say anything. They don't already know. <laughs> there was no amplification. Yes. So to, if someone heard me sing, they immediately would say, "Well, she should be on Broadway. She has a, that yeah. voice. You know, the loud." They never said whether it was pretty or anything. It was just loud to be loud. You know that that actually is an interesting point because you've worked on the Broadway stage without amplification. Of course. And yes. you, Kelly, has a voice so. that where you could work without ampl yes. amplification. Why are Broadway musicals now amplified? I don't understand that. You know what I think? What? I think people have gotten uh, uh, so accustomed to it that they think something's wrong if yes. the sound isn't if coming the sound from isn't over there instead from of on the stage. Out. Oh, isn't that interesting? I really do think so. Uh -huh. They've become... And it has to be so loud. It, they're so it, used to loud they, noises. They're, they're tuned. Their ears are tuned to this. Mm -hmm. I mean, you talk to children now, and they'll say, uh, I, I, I saw you in the movie, you know. and uh, But they think Peter Pan was in the movie. Yeah. Because they see the television. Well, that's the way I saw <laughs> Peter Pan, you know. I, I, I can imagine to see that live on a stage would have been electric. My first, uh, watching my first show when I came With to New York. With the flying around It's unbelievable. And, the, and the feeling that you get when you're on that stage is... Kelly, were you in Santa Fe when that was happening? Yes. Because you were a little girl. Yes. I love your name. You see, that, you. I, I think all that has a lot to do with it. I think the name is so right, and it's your real name. Kelly, Kelly? Garrett. Well, what well, doesn't really matter. Whatever it was, it's a good name. That's first. And then the looks, the beauty. Her real name is Mary Martin, you see. Ah! <laughs> she had to and change you had it. to change. Yeah, she had to go and change it. Like I'll take over Kelly. We'll take a break. We'll be back after this. Kelly. We're here. What a great... I can't remember when I've had so much fun. I really mean that. This, I wish we could go on and on and on. Kelly, what would you like to ask? Here we have... People ask you for advice. You yes, know, people hang around the stage door ask you. And okay? I'm, I'm so pleased that I'm here because I, I would love to know what advice you could give to me. I, uh, I, I really would like to know. Are you looking at me? Mm -hmm. uh, I think that what I would say is never... Never uh, downgrade an audience. Uh, uh, love audiences and think of them and plan your whole life around audiences and not anything else. I applaud else. that. I think yes. that's really good advice. Thank you. You know, so often in television, we, you know, we hear people thinking in terms of pandering to the audience. I never feel that way myself. No, Lillian, never. how about you? For Echoing everything Helen says, and then give up your own private life and dedicate it to what you've been, the profession you've been put into, and give it the best you can uh, for the people, and don't think of yourself. And Mary, mm -hmm. what would your... Mine is to be true to yourself. You found yourself. Apparently, you have found yourself because you've now done two or three shows, uh, you know. Um, and you, that was advice given to me by Jerome Kern. And, and, it, and you found yourself. Be true to yourself. Don't analyze anything too much. Just mm -hmm. let it happen. If you pull all the petals off of a rose, you no longer have the rose. That's true. Yes. And your eyes. And you're your you're eyes. so right. I, I sat there and watched your eyes. They, they speak. They are just so yes, engaging. Oh, too, Kelly. Wonderful. Again, please take a look at Mary Martin's book. This is called My Heart Belongs. And uh, a part of my heart belongs in this book right now. It's very, very special. <laughs> Thank you, Helen Hayes, Lillian Gish, Mary Martin, Kelly Garrett, and everybody watching. Just give yourself a great weekend, and I'll see you here Monday at 1130.